How's it going guys? My name is Graham and welcome to a new series, Please Go Play. The purpose is for this to somewhat function as a review, but in general, I'll only be including games in the series that I genuinely love in some particular way. For most of them, it's in every way. So you can simply consider games in this series to be a 10 out of 10 from me, a complete endorsement, and essentially a sales pitch for why I think you should pick this up and play it yourself. Smile for Me is a game from Gabe Lane and Hugo Limbo, collectively going by Limbo Lane, and this game first caught my eye with its sell point as being kind of a nodding simulator. It plays out like a 3D first person point and click adventure game where you give NPCs yes and no responses by waggling the camera around. That already interesting concept was then supported by one of the most charming fusions of 3D environments and 2D characters, sporting double fine-esque character designs. So already a silly hook and really clean looking art, but once I booted up the game for the first time, I found that there was immediately something off about this game. It plays off these tropes of paranoia and fear that are more deeply seated in something closer to a horror game. So I would say this game has psychological elements, but it is far from horror. These small mind games create an atmosphere that has both looming fear and a more urgent sense of danger, so there's both more distant and prescient things you have to worry about. Smile for me was an absolute unexpected delight and maybe one of my most memorable gaming experiences from last year. Already I would shoo you away to go play the game yourself, but I do plan to keep this video spoiler free, so if you need a little more convincing then please stick around. While the game is comprised of many smaller interactions, you're slowly unpacking a large larger story. You have hints of what's going on immediately, but you only get bits and pieces the further along you go. You awake in the habitat, filled with many memorable NPCs who are all in confinement receiving treatment for their own troubles. The walls of the habitat are plastered with wellness propaganda, and the residents are all overseen by the mysterious Dr. Habit, who seems to be keeping a big brother-like eye on all the happenings in this controlled environment. Each day opens up with these motivational messages played on like a VHS tape presented to you by a live-action puppet, adding yet another dimension to this game's already unique sense of style. But the fractured grammar and vaguely sinister statements in these presentations send some serious mixed messages to an otherwise cheery environment. The game likes to do what it can to send you a little off kilter at any moment, trying to shake the feeling of that major creep out. You can wander the habitat and talk to those within. Everyone is trying to accomplish something or overcome some personal hurdle. It will be your job to navigate their personalities and relationships to best help them through these struggles. There are over 20 different NPCs to help overall, so there's quite a bit to be done, but at the end of that first day, you'll quickly learn the importance of time management. The game presents a sudden, desperate need to get back to bed before nightfall, or else you will be the victim of unknown terrors. Things are kept vague in the best possible way. That sense of dread is powerful, especially flying in stark contrast to the vibrant visuals of the rest of the game. This constant juxtaposition of happy and horrifying, silly and sadistic, colorful and creepy, are what make the game really memorable. But on top of that, the story and gameplay are what make the game fun. The puzzles are intricate, yet very cleverly designed. I felt like I was always able to trail just one step behind the developers, with the solutions rarely feeling obvious, but almost never feeling so abstract that I required a walkthrough. These small progressions and successes during each day of the game were super rewarding. Each aha moment was jubilant and felt well earned, like I was an absolute genius for discovering a particularly creative solution, even though there is only really one way to solve each thing. I'm honestly super impressed with the overall difficulty curve. That's a really hard thing to achieve in this type of game. I think the first few puzzles provide some additional challenge while I grew accustomed to the game's particular puzzle mechanics, but once you've solved one or two, you'll grow more familiar with the game's language of solutions. Then you'll likely set a good pace of a few solutions per day, with things feeling very evenly spaced apart, with a few particular stumpers towards the end. The game layout wisely separates itself into multiple different habitat sections. You have no choice but to experience the game in small chunks to begin with. You start on a main floor with only a few characters, you eventually make your way downstairs, into a circus area, go back to the roof of the starting area, and since you always have to return to your bed before the day's end, you're encouraged to revisit these original areas and explore previously unavailable solutions, meaning that the level layout needed to be really simplistic to serve that progression. This is going to sound dumb, but if I had
had to compare it to anything, it's similar to Dark Souls. The way that original game had a very vertical level layout, meaning that even from that simple starting location, you essentially have access to everywhere else. I think it serviced the gameplay really well here. There was always a sense of urgency getting back to your room, but you never felt too rushed, and the backtracking never felt too arduous. So in general, the layout of the habitat was very conducive to exploration and puzzle solving, which are the two main things it needed to accomplish. If I had to pick out a single complaint, it was that it was sometimes a little tough to determine exactly how much you had to move the mouse to elicit either a yes or no response. If you go at it a little too subtly or enthusiastically, it doesn't seem to properly record, but you eventually get used to it. Less of a complaint and more of a wish is I would have liked to have seen more developed B-plots. One could argue that every character or pair of related characters act as a B-plot, but it would have been nice if there was one or two other major mysteries to solve that were completely separate from the main arc, but I'm aware that's asking quite a lot. The content that we're already given is incredibly well-crafted and very enjoyable, including the possibility of multiple different endings for everyone else like me out there who is very appreciative of that narrative freedom. And as a fun little bonus, Dr. Habit actually has their very own Twitter account where they share all sorts of silly musings and weird broken English and things like that. Worth following. It's just, it's just fun. What it boils down to, great writing, creative aesthetic combinations, NPCs bursting with personality, interesting main themes and an overarching mystery, and engaging yet challenging puzzles. I love everything about this game, and I think that you will too. So please, go play Smile for me. I've been meaning to do a review for this game for a long time, and I just kind of had a realization that I essentially only review games on this channel that I really love. With the exception of maybe Jackbox, I'm a little more critical there, but anything else I've reviewed it because I'm recommending it. And if all of my reviews are recommendations, then there's not really a scale there to be represented. If these games are all in the range of 9 to 10 out of 10, then I'd rather present them in a way that you know when you're clicking the video you're getting an endorsement. This was somewhat inspired by Snowman Gaming's You Need to Play This. I obviously didn't want to rip off that title directly, even though it is super heavily inspired by, but I decided to lean a little bit more into my Canadian-ness. I have a few other games in mind already for this series, I'm looking forward to sharing them with you, hopefully putting some new eyes on some very deserving games. I did do a full playthrough of this game on the Let's Play channel, so I'll have a link to that in the end cards for anyone who's curious, and a link in the description if you want to go buy the game for yourself. Thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see you again soon.